Okay, our final section for chapter seven is before we've been focusing on finding the roots of a quadratic equation. Where does the parabola cross the x-axis? That's what the roots are, right? The roots of an equation are the zeros of the equation or function, which are the solutions when you set it equal to zero. And that's what we've been um, working on, is I give you the quadratic, you give me the solutions, either by doing quadratic formula, factoring, or completing the square, or graphing. But now we're gonna work backwards. What if I said, what if I said, well, the roots of an equation are one and three? Could you create the quadratic equation? So hopefully you're saying to yourself, yeah, I think I can. You would go backwards and saying that, well, I can put those roots in this form, right? Remember if we did x squared plus um, 3x plus 2 equals 0, we would factor that into x plus 2, x plus 1, and then x would equal negative 2 and negative 1. Well, now if I give you these answers, can you both go backwards and give me the quadratics? So that's what we're doing. First, I give you the answers or the zeros or the solutions or the roots. That's what these are right here. I put them in parentheses in factored form, and then I foil this, right? And I would get x squared minus 3x minus 1x plus 3 equals 0, which is x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals zero. And that's my quadratic equation, which leads me to get these roots. So that's the idea of the lesson today. So if we look at these two forms, this form is what I just did up here. It says if r sub 1 and r sub 2 are roots of a quadratic equation, so in other words, they're representing these, then it's true that x minus r sub 1 times x minus r sub 2 equals 0. Yes, that's true. I just showed you that process here. Okay, so let's do a quick investigation to see if we can tie that in to other stuff that's in quadratic form, or sorry, that's in uh, standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Okay, so let's FOIL the left-hand side. x times x is x squared. x times negative r is negative x or sorry, negative r sub 2x. Let's put the coefficient in front, and the coefficient is r sub 2. And then we do the inside, which is r sub 1 times x, and then finally the outside, negative r sub 1 times negative r sub 2 is just r sub 1 times r sub 2. It turns into a positive. Well, if we continue, we want to combine like terms. And our like terms are those with the x's. So we get x squared, and then we have a negative r sub 1 and a negative r sub 2. So if I put a minus sign here and I combine the r sub 1 and r sub 2, right, and then I have my x on the outside, and then my r sub 1 times r sub 2 stays the same. So this negative r sub 2, this negative r sub 1, well, I factored out the negative. So after I redistributed it, both of these would be negative. So therefore, when I put it in parentheses, I had to make it equal to positive. Okay, on the right-hand side, if I do this one, sorry, let me go back to this one and just say a few more things. So this right here is the sum of the roots, right? This is the coefficient right here. It's the negative, and then it's the sum of the roots. And this right here is the product of the roots. So here we take the opposite. That negative sign is important. So we take the sum, take the opposite of the sum, if we were to ignore those signs, and then here's the product. So on the other side, if I factor out my a, I would get x squared. Well, to factor it out, remember you divide each individual term, sorry, by a, not x. So I factor out my a, I get x squared plus, well, there's nothing to cancel there. So it's b divided by ax, here my a's canceled, and then I have plus c divided by a, and that equals zero. So this right here is equivalent to this right here. Because notice there's no a factor, my a is a coefficient of one. This is assuming that the a is a coefficient of one. So therefore, if we move on, it says set the corresponding coefficients equal to each other. So the coefficient in front of my x is negative r sub 1 plus r sub 2. And the coefficient in front of my x over here 
is positive b over a. So in order to make this not distribute the negative, I can just get rid of the negative by dividing by negative 1, which means, in other words, I'm going to change this sign on my left-hand side, change the sign on my right-hand side. So we simply get r sub 1 plus r sub 2 equals negative b over a. So if you know the roots of the equation, that would give you negative b divided by a. So if I have the quadratic, you would just take negative b over a, and it should equal the, two, the sum of the two roots. And the other relationship is this. What is the product? Well, the product r sub 1 times r sub 2 of the roots is equal to this constant, which is c over a. They're, they both have the same sign, so we don't need to change anything. So the product of the roots, r sub 1 times r sub 2, equals c divided by a. Okay, why would you use this? Well, we might use this information to check our solutions of a quadratic equation, or we might actually have to define the equation given the two roots. So let's try it to find the equation. So it says find a quadratic equation with integral coefficients. This means what? Integral, integers it means. Integral coefficients having roots 3 plus i divided by 2 and 3 minus i divided by 2. Well, according to this information up here, if we took the sum of these two roots, so I'm adding these two roots together, right, here's root 1, here's root 2, if I took the sum of those two roots, that should equal negative b over a. Okay, so they have a common denominator, it's 2, so we do 3 plus i plus 3 minus i, well the i's cancel, that's nice. And 3 plus 3 is 6, so that's 6 divided by 2. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that for now because we don't know if our A should disappear or not. Should the A remain a 2 and the B remain a 6, or can we cancel that out and make it a 3 over 1? Okay, then I'm going to do the multiplication. So this says that if I multiply 3 plus i divided by 2 times 3 minus i divided by 2, now I'm looking at this one, then that should equal c over a. Okay, well, if I multiply the denominator, that's easy. 2 times 2 is 4. But now I'm going to multiply these numerators. Well, it's the difference of squares, right? When I multiply these numerators, difference of squares. So I only have to do the first term, which is 3 times 3, 9. And then positive i times negative i is negative i squared. But a negative i squared is what? Well, i squared, if you cover up the negative, i squared is negative 1. So a double negative turns into a positive, right? Well, 9 plus 1 is equal to 10. That's 10 fourths. Now notice this is equal to c over a. Well, in this a, we have a 4, sorry, in this fraction we have a is 4, and in this fraction we have a is 2. Can we reduce 10 fourths to get a 2 so the a's are the same? Yes, so we're going to reduce this to 5 halves. So now we can see that our letter a is 2, our letter b is 6, and our letter c is 5, right? Because I have to get my a's to match. So I can reduce the 10 fourths to 5 halves, so now my a's match. So this, basically, these are the coefficients or the numbers that plug into your ax squared plus bx plus c. So my final equation, right, final equation with integral coefficients, it would be 2x squared plus 6x plus 5 equals 0. Or you could put f of x if it says find a function, um, or you could put a y, but 2x squared plus 6x plus 5 equals 0 is your quadratic equation that has these roots. And if you're not sure, you can check it by doing the quadratic formula. Right? Check it doing the quadratic formula and see if you get 3 plus i divided by 2 and 3 minus i divided by 2. Okay, moving on to the next one. It says find the roots of the equation 2y squared plus y minus 5 and check your answers by using the information above. Okay, well when I look at this, I instantly think I'm going to use quadratic formula. 
So y equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So that's negative 1 plus or minus. Let's simplify this. I'm going to do this in my head because I'm not on the calculator. 20 times 2 is 40 plus 1 is 41. So I get roots of negative 1 plus or minus root 41 divided by 4. Okay, so how can I check my answer? It says check your answer by using those rules. Okay, well the rules say that if I take root 1 plus root 2, that should equal negative b over a. Okay, so negative 1 plus root 41 plus negative 1 minus root 41 divided by their common denominator should equal negative b over a. Okay, negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. Root 41s cancel. Yay. So negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 4. So negative b and a. Well, remember negative 2 fourths can reduce to negative 1 half. So what does it... This is negative 2, right? Negative b equals negative 2. So therefore, what do I get? Is b positive 1? Yes, because this double negative changes into a positive. So b is positive 1. A is positive 2, so it looks good so far. And then my second thing to do would be to multiply. Negative 1 plus root 41 divided by 4 times negative 1 minus root 41 divided by 4. Well, difference of squares in the numerator, so that's 1 minus 41. And then 4 times 4 is 16, so that's negative 40 divided by 16. They're both divisible by 8, so that's negative 5 fourths. So C is negative 5, oh sorry, negative 5 halves, which are divisible by 8. It's a wonder in there for a second. So again, C is negative 5, check, and A is 2, check. So yes, it worked, and I know that these are the correct answers. Now would I expect you to take all that time to do that checking? No, I wouldn't. Look, I'm already 12 minutes into this video, and we've hardly done anything. So I'd probably just do the quadratic formula and hope that I did everything correctly. But if you have spare time and you want to check, obviously these are the two strategies you would use. Now when I did this problem, I was thinking I must have made a mistake up here. Did I deal with this negative sign up here? I want to say I didn't. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 divided by 2 equals negative b over 2a. Did I assign 6 as being negative? No, I didn't. So this should be a minus sign up here, I do believe. So b is negative 6, a is positive 2. Here we verify that a is positive 2, c is positive 5 because of this. So I'm sorry, that should have been a minus 6 up there. As I was going through this problem, that just caught my eye. So 2x squared minus 6x plus 5. Hopefully I didn't confuse you. Um, if I did, come see me or just start from scratch and then see if you get these answers. Sorry about that. Okay, so now look at our next one. It says find a quadratic function with a minimum value of negative 1 whose graph has x-intercepts of 1 and 3. So what does that mean? That means that 1 and 3, your quadratic, your parabola is going to cross there. And it has a minimum of negative 1, which means that's the bottom of the vertex. right? The vertex should be somewhere on that line. Well, logically, if this is where your parabola is going to cross, your vertex has to be in the middle. It has to be in between them, exactly in between them, because parabolas are symmetric. So what are you going to do? Well, if this is a 1 and this is a 3, you can find the average. So what do you do? You find the average. So 1 plus 3 divided by 2, that's 4 divided by 2, which is 2. What does that mean? That means the vertex is 2, negative 1. How did I know the vertex was 2, negative 1? Because it said it has a minimum value of negative 1, and the only thing that goes the lowest is the vertex. Nothing goes below the vertex. So I knew that was the y value. How did I get the x value? Well, I just found the average between the two zeros. You can do that every time. So now we have to find the quadratic function, though. Okay, so how are you going to do that? You can use this method, or you can do the two roots. So you figure it out and watch the next video to see what I do.